Welcome back to the three months of modal logics, the sequel to 100 Days of Logic here with Cardinadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with temporal logic, looking at the discreteness of time. So, the properties of predecessorship and successorship define a timeline that has no beginning, no end, and each instant has an immediate successor and predecessor. A dense timeline defines a timeline such that no instant has an immediate predecessor or successor because between any two instants there's another instant. However, we do not yet have a way to define a timeline that has a set beginning or end, but with the exception of the first and last instance, all instants have a predecessor and a successor. All whole numbers greater than 0 and less than 10, for example. These numbers are not dense between 5 and 6. There's no other number. But they don't have the predecessorship relation because there's no predecessor to 1. Nor do they have the successorship relation because there's no immediate successor to 9. So we need a way to describe a set like this. Discreteness is going to do just that. So just as we had properties relating to both predecessors and successors, we have forward discreteness and backward discreteness. Forward discreteness says that any instant that has a successor has an immediate successor. So basically, if there is an instant after that instant, then that instant has an immediate successor. So this allows for there to be a last instant because that last instant isn't going to fill, fulfill the first half of the conditional. It's not going to have any successor, so it doesn't need to have an immediate successor. Backward directedness, conversely, says that any instant that has a predecessor has an immediate predecessor. So, similarly, it's not going to imply that time must have no beginning or a set must have no beginning because the first instant isn't going to have a predecessor at all, so it doesn't need to have an immediate predecessor. These are going to be implied by successorship and predecessorship respectively, but they're going to be slightly weaker since they don't stipulate that all instants must have an immediate predecessor or successor, merely that those that already have a predecessor or successor must have an immediate one. Hopefully this is clear. Directedness is just the same as predecessorship or successorship without the stipulation that you need to have a beginning or an end. Or rather, with the possibility that you could have a beginning and the possibility that you could have an end. So logically, basically, if some instant has a predecessor, then that instant has some predecessor for which all other predecessors of the original instant are before or identical to. Forward discreteness is going to say, for all x there exists some y such that x is before y implies there exists some y such that x is before y, and for all z, x being before z implies that y is identical to or before z, and backward discreteness is going to say, logically, for all x there exists some y such that y is before x implies there exists some y such that y is before x and for all z, z is before x implies that z is before or the same as y. Hopefully those logical expressions make sense to you, or at least the basic ideas make sense. Like I said, these are going to be very, very similar to predecessorship and successorship without the stipulation that there must be no end or no beginning. Up next, we've already started talking about the beginning and end of time. We're going to get some nice, clear properties that can define if you want to say that time has a beginning or time has an end. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. Watch a new video every single day for three months with the three months of modal logic. And stay skeptical, everybody.